fuck these niggas telling me, man? Yeah, I'm feeling pissed off. I knew some bitches was down for the team, them bitches got kicked off. I fucked up the money, we offered the breeze, we rowdy, we kicked doors. You know my body, don't go through the lobby, we straight to the sixth floor. We told him we tag him, get small like a dragon, we ready for big war. You know that I'm better, got dope and berettas, we talking them big chops. My heart is so cold, we toting them poles, you know that we fish ops. I got a baddie and she got a fatty, she toting them twin glocks. I lose my beretta, can't hold it together when she make that thing pop. I'm shooting my shot, and I best not miss. Diamonds is wet, looking like I let it float on my wrist. I've been through enough. Listen, we're here. We are here. I feel great, you know? Uh, I'm nervous. I mean, we're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna keep it simple. The energy feels great already, I can tell you that. First radio station in America. First time I was ever on radio, that was in Haiti. Now we in the US with it. It took about 10 years, but we're still here, so. I'm anxious to see how this is gonna go. Yes, we back, are. Back, back. What's up, Bodo? So we got our special guest in the building. Hello, hello, hello. How you guys doing? We are blessed and we are good. We're happy, you know, welcome to One Love. All right. Thank you for it's your first time me. being here? Yes, it is. Actually, my first time on the radio in America, period. Really? Yes, That's yes, awesome. yes. Okay, you said in America. Yes. You know I got to get into my questions. Right <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you were on the radio where else? First time I was ever on the radio mm -hmm. was actually in Haiti. Oh wow, nice. So you're not a rookie to this. This is not your first rodeo. Still learning. <laughs> All right, that's what's up, that's what's up. So, what, tell us about who you are. Who is 509? Should I be 509? Should I say Bosco? 509 Bosco is a, is, is a brother, you know? I'm, I'm a Haitian first. Okay. I'm a Haitian man first, you know? Mm -hmm. um, artist second. Yes. Uh, one thing about me, uh, I love having a good time, family. So the name Bosco is actually a name that my friends and I came up with. Oh. Which kind of means like, like brother. Okay. So um, 509 is the Haitian area code, and then yeah. Bosco, which is brother. So Haitian brother is pretty much my artist name. Oh, that's so, dope. I like yeah. that. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that. So how long have you been doing music for? Like, what was it? What was, um, first of all, yeah. We'll get into how long you've been doing music, and then I'll ask the other questions. Sometimes <laughs> all the thoughts run into my mind, and I'm uh, like, ooh, I got another question. Right. So, yeah, so how long have you been doing music for? Um, I think I've been doing music since I was realistically like seven, eight years old. Okay. Yes. I yes. grew up in the church, so, uh, ah. you know, they, they had me on the drums, they had me on the guitar, oh. they had me on the, on the piano a little bit, you know. So you were playing the instruments, too? Yes, I played three instruments, yeah. You play three instruments? Yes, I do. Oh, lie. Yes, yes. She, she, what going on there, man? <laughs> we, we need to brush up on our instruments. We have a, a, a talented man here. What instruments do you play? Uh, I play guitar, drums, and piano. But to be honest, I, I fell in love with the keys, man. There's something about that piano. It's really? Magical. That's magical. also it's a special relationship with the keys. Yes, uh, I gotta thank God for that too, though, because I think if they never had me sitting down in that church, uh -huh. I would have never connected with music like that. So you know, it went from doing it as a chore to like not mm -hmm. being able to live without it. That's true. You no, know, so Lord knows, I, I would be like, man, church again? Why would we just can't <laughs> stay home? You know, the Haitians five-hour church sessions. Okay, for <laughs> real. <laughs> so okay, so you've been doing uh, sorry, you've been doing music since you were seven. Yes. Okay. And this was in Haiti, doing it in the church. Um, you have a special relationship for keys. Yes, I do. Um, how were you able to develop that and uh, nurture that talent where you were like, you know what, let me take this professionally? Have you guys ever heard of a gentleman by the name of Sweet Mickey? Of course. All right, well, uh, <laughs> of course. I was lucky enough to go to school with his sons. Really? Yes, uh, so, so Sado, Sado Mardelli. Uh -huh. I went to school with him. Okay. And I used to freestyle a lot, just kind of, you know, kicking it with the guys. And mm -hmm. one day someone asked me, hey, why don't you take that to Michelle Martelli's kid? Yeah. And I never knew his real name. I only knew him by Sweet Mickey. So right, I'm, like, right. I'm like, who's that? He's like, dude, Sweet Mickey. 
So I was like, oh, okay. So I had a conversation with him and he invited me to his crib. Um, amazing home studio. Wow. And that was the first time I ever laid my vocals down on wax. What? Yeah, so I owe Haiti a lot. So it's was a, it? So, so that's that's like the dream experience, right? It was. It that's was that's like that's like one of those things that doesn't happen every day to everyone. No, I mean, and remember, he was his dad was the president at the time. So oh, oh, was, this was at the time yeah, when he was the president. So you're going so it to the president's house. Wow. To cut tracks. <laughs> what? what was it even that long ago? It wasn't. Hold on. No. A minute. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. No. 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 I actually, I want when I say hold on a minute. I mean, you know, I want to hear the rest of your story. Okay. Though. For real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, the I sounded horrible the first song. I sounded like a fish out of water. Like Ugh. amateur. It was amateur. horrible. But I can but, imagine that it was yeah. probably you know nerves and stuff like that. Like, do I, do I get this right? Do I go back and do my double, like double up your voice and stuff like that? So, I mean, in my head, it sounded like a Grammy. But <laughs> when I got there physically, it was. But I just kept going, and um, yes. you know, I was laughed at a lot. You know, especially mm -hmm. because I had trouble finding my sound. Like, I didn't know if I wanted to sing. I didn't know if I wanted to rap. Mm -hmm. um, my family being religious, I had to you know be careful with my lyrics because mm -hmm. yeah, they listen. listen. You know, so mm -hmm. I just had to. I always just say like I put the music first. So mm -hmm. if someone's laughing at me, but it feels good when I close my eyes, I just say, all right, let's go. Let's just keep doing it. You're like, forget it, forget yeah. it. Wait, funk, what all of y'all are saying? <laughs> I, I got this. Yeah, I know man. I'm talented. I got a love for this. Let the music talk. Mm, well, it's talking boo, because you know I be bumping your stuff I in the car that. on the regular. Yeah. It's on my playlist. Mm, you got them all. Yes, I do. And um, so it wasn't that good. You just kept going. You let the music speak for itself. Now, yes. at what point was it that you... So this was all still in Haiti. Uh, yeah, and then the earthquake happened. And then the earthquake happened. Tell us about that experience for you. Um, one of the reasons why I really say I want to thank God is because a lot of kids younger than me lost their lives out there. Wow, yeah. And um, us being from a country like Haiti, mm -hmm. we weren't really educated on what it was at the time, so no one right. knew what to do when it was happening. Right. So, you know, I was stuck there for a few weeks before we got out, but... Oh. You know, I'm not really a saint, I'm not innocent, so I'm always thinking like, why did I make it out of there? And, um, you know, some of the younger people didn't. Okay. So, this is one of the only things that I feel like I know how to do right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure where God wants me to take it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of reasons I always put him in this is because you, a message is a message, but you, you're, not, you don't, you're not always sure of the message. Like, you want me to go this way? Do you want me to go that way? Mm -hmm. All right, you want to go that way, but I've been struggling. I mean, I need a bag. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, 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 it's okay. We probably just need to lower down the studio yeah. volume, but no, but yeah, no, I, I get you. It's hard. Yeah, like, is it my voice telling me to do this, or is it, you know, a message? Am I doing this because I feel like they want it, or is it the right thing to do? Right. So then you were able to, you left and you came up here. Yes, I made that decision uh, when I was 18. Pretty much, I just left the house. Pretty much. What part of Haiti? Uh, when I was there. Yeah. I used to live in Port-au-Prince with my grandfather in this place called Jalousie. Jalousie. Shout out to Jalousie. The real slums taught me how to fight everything. Wow. Yes. And then my mother, who was you know a little better off, she mm -hmm. used to live in this place called Tomasin. Tomasin. So Tomasin is like I guess you could say the Southport. Okay. Of Haiti. Oh. And Pichonville, of course, is the Bridgeport. No offense. Petroville is the Bridgeport? It's a lot crazier in Petroville. The lot says in the mountains. I, I, I like thought Petroville was supposed to be the, the well, class well, part. I thought that was Greenwich. Or well, well, you gotta... No, Petroville is... Well, not anymore, right? Because, of course, over time, things change. Girl, I really do Right? Thought. And so Petroville was, was considered like a Greenwich many, many years back. There probably when mm -hmm. our parents were growing up there. Um, and then when you consider, like, you know, recent times, like the... The 90s and the 2000s, it's not so much that. She knows her stuff. Yeah, she does. She, she, <laughs> frequents, she frequents a lot. Listen, okay, so friends that I said I'm going to take y'all to Haiti, uh, we ain't going to Petroville, okay? Well, that's oh, not. Well, see, you see, sure? Well, hold on now. You but said see, it was Bridgeport. Then, but, but then that's like saying that we can't live here in Bridgeport, right? You're right. And you then that wouldn't be fair here. because Bridgeport okay. is not all like, you know, ratchet, ratchet, ratchet. Right, you it's, got Park Ave, you got the North End. Oh, you know, right. you know, you have Madison. <laughs> right. You moved up here and you continued your pursuit of music. Yes. Um, against a lot of family members' advice to uh, go to school, and I'm not saying I didn't want to go to school. Right. So I had to compromise. Okay. I went to production school. 
Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I was going to school, but these things are expensive, of course. Yes. So I'm over here working jobs, and I never really worked the job that I wanted to. My end goal mm -hmm. was I need funds to fund the studio. Mm -hmm. I need funds to fund the studio. So It's called a stepping stone. Yes, mm -hmm. and I was very humble with the positions I took. I, I was a janitor. Mm -hmm. I was a nanny. Mm -hmm. I was a driver. Mm -hmm. I'm sure a few of you have probably gotten lift rides from me. I'm not afraid to say that. But, That's what's up. You know, every That's a whole hustle. I can't. I'm yeah. not knocking none of the lift drivers. I'm, I'm not going to knock Uber. any Anybody who is out here trying to, Let's to you know, Shout make out to the some money right. <laughs> and do their thing. Uh, listen, right. a job is a job is a job, and you're trying to make a way for yourself. Right. So um, that's a respectable uh, that's a respectable thing to do. Facts. I had a, I had a plan. So. I love it. I yeah. love it. You definitely were nurturing your talent. Mm -hmm. So this is a question that I constantly um, always ask everyone. Kind of yeah. jumping the gun a little bit with this, but we're going to get back into you know the interview. Okay. Um, but so knowing all of this right now, currently, after um, Corona, not saying after, because I guess we're kind of still going through the motions right. of rebuilding, you know, being not present in socializing and being able to move around the way we wanted to during Corona. How do you feel it affected your music? Do you feel like it stifled you in your ability to create new content or be able to promote yourself in the way that you should have during Corona? Or do you feel like you were able to adapt to it and redefine and refine your sound or your talent or whatever it is that, that kind of pushed you in marketing your music and creating content. It gave me the opportunity to communicate with people because mm -hmm. at this point, people are home, they're forced to stay home. Mm -hmm. So they're going through those emails. Mm -hmm. And I'm the guy that's, hey, you know, I'm this artist, I'm trying to do this, or, you know, I see your page and you do that. So during the lockdown, I took advantage of the time that I had. Mm -hmm. So. There One, you go. Yeah. You, you basically, they had no choice yeah. but to listen to you. They had nothing but time. Hey, you're going to open this email. Take me out the spam box. <laughs> Take me out the spam box. Open the email. Send me yep. the stems. Because like, nice. yeah. everybody was at home looking for something to do, trying mm -hmm. to keep themselves busy. Yeah. So and that was your opportunity. Of course. And of course, you know, Tory Lanez with the quarantine radio thing, oh. that was a fun thing to watch, but it also sparked my attention. So, right. Like, wait, people are actually home looking for entertainment. Right. So that message of, hey, I'm a local artist, check me out. Maybe it'll get red now. So I just applied pressure, mm -hmm. and I reached out to some people from Scotland. Wow. Yes, and this is why I'm here now. Okay. Um, not to reveal anything later in the show, but murder. Okay. Yes. That's where that came from. Really? Yes. I love it. You yes. know, I, you, know <laughs> you know I like that song. Yes. Uh -oh. And it's actually funny, because I got that song during quarantine. That's when it was conceived, if that's the right way to say that it. That song <laughs> came from me via Florida, okay? Somebody hit me up wow. and was like, listen to this guy. And I was like, what? They were like, listen to him, okay? He's dope. And then I started listening and I'm like, okay, um, who is he? I was like, okay. I listened to like the first five minutes and then I was like, okay, no, no, no. I was like, who, who is he? So I'm texting this person back and I'm like, listen, um, who is this person? He's really dope. I love his sound. And I listen to a lot of like hip hop, reggae and stuff like that from all over. Mm -hmm. Like I like international music, I want to get into it. And what I liked it was that the sound was drill, right? But it sounded a little kind of UK-ish to me, which I was feeling, even though a lot of us Americans are not we can't really wrap our minds around different type of music until it was right. before it's time, basically. Yes, yes. Oh you feel God. me? Definitely was. Yeah. People ain't ready. They, but they, they don't their ears weren't hip to it yet. They don't know. Yeah. They don't know. That's a whole wave. That's like even like um what's that music style? Which one? The, uh it's kinda like big and reggae right right now, kinda like like let's say Afrobeats. Okay. Okay? Right. That's another style people weren't really ready for. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, now it's in everything. Mm -hmm. You can't even play like, you know, a, a, a <laughs> reggae song or a hip hop song without some kind of, you know, calypso or reggae there or sound in that. Yeah, it's like worldly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so your song reached me during quarantine that is crazy. via Florida. That is crazy. And you were right here in Connecticut. So I that just right means here. that it did what it, exactly what it was supposed to do. Honey, yes, wow. it, yes it did. Shout out to that person that got that song to you. Shout for out, real. Shout out to her. Yeah. For, yeah, she on, wait, she on here. Is she on here? She on oh, here. Sh shout out to you. I'm, I'm looking Yana. at you right now. Thank you. <laughs> All right, for real, for real. So, okay, yes. who would you say is like um, somebody that you would love to work with in... Locally? Like, yeah, no, not even look anywhere. Like, um, I guess that's really famous, I guess I want to say that. Okay. Like uh, some producers that you admire. Party Next Door. Party Next Door. 
Oh, look at Shavarna. Like Shavarna. That. He's a cool Shavarna. cat. Shavarna. Period. Shavarna. Period. 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 Three of them I'll buy, and then the last one I'll contact a producer, like homie from Scotland, and we'll work on it. Yeah. What was that like, building that relationship with the guy from Scotland? It was like blinding myself and standing at the three-point line and taking a shot. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to work, and I forgot there's a time difference. So when I wrote him and didn't get a response, I thought he dubbed me. And then, like, three o'clock in the morning, hey, lad, I just got your email. <laughs> <laughs> Call me on Discord. Like, no, I was like, all right. And it's nice. a seventeen-year-old kid from Scotland. What? Yeah, and he's the one, and I'm proud to say it. He's the one that I could say introduced me to the UK version of Drill. I love it. So shout out to him. Shout out to uh, Cashy if you're watching right now. Shout out to you, Cashy. Big shout out, Cashy. Pick up yourself. Okay, can we listen to that track? Oh yes, definitely. Because I think the world needs to hear this. I'm definitely feeling. Let's go ahead and run that track. Sheesh. Yeah. I'm in charge and I've been tough dog, so you man's not better come test me. I stay hospital, not sweet, not nah, nah, not Nestle. Edgy, 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 check me, man, them better not fetch me. Sasha, Tasha, Leslie, girl, them mother wanna give me Becky. I pull up with the clippers, bangers, yeah, we cool on the west side. Five or nine, that's my time, see no faces, we can't talk crime. Right? In the nighttime, cause in the nighttime, that be the right time. Clips and bangers, don't need cameras, you think this ain't prime time. Yeah, hit them boys, better move. Couple ops in a room, told the needle, put a nap to. Yeah, uh, keep on hating, I ain't mad at you. Short my money when the bags do. When I see you, I'ma clap to. Yeah, waste mine, yeah. Say you won't rush, but when you rush, your head get bust. You talk too much. Motivation, battery in the back. Sheesh. All right. That's For real. Like. That's what we like. That's what we like. I love it. I love it. A little energy, right? Oh, my God. Just a vibe. Just a vibe. Like, I, I even had, like, goosebumps and stuff like that because I was feeling it. I was like, what? It was nice and loud in the studio, too. Would you believe that I almost threw away that song? What? Because that was, that was my first one. That was my first one. So when I recorded it, I was like, man, this sound crazy. Why I sound like that? I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be a vibe. I almost threw it out. I had to send it out to a few people, and they were like, nah. Keep this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, thank you, people. Yes. Whoever you sent it to, for real, cause uh, I almost didn't believe in it. Almost didn't believe in it. No, believe in that. All right. So prior to this, you were doing different types of music. Yes. You were doing. Give us a little backstory on the different types you were doing. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. So country. Okay. Rock. Okay. Classic. Uh oh. Pompa. Okay. Can I keep going? Yes. Okay. Try calypso a little bit. Really? Afrobeat? I kind of want to hear that though. Wait, go ahead. Afrobeats? Uh, All right, yeah. EDM? EDM? Yep. And gospel. Uh, 
Sure, sure. So, of all the different uh, genres of music that you played around with, what was your favorite? And what, or, or rather, what was your favorite, or which one did you have the most fun with? So, so that could be two different genres, or it could be the same. It's all up to you. Oh yes. How you want to answer that question? I have a song called Criminal. Um, it's like moody R&B soul trap soulish. Mm. I would say out of all the genres I've ever played with, R&B like moody soul. Mm. I felt like I could get into my bag because I carry a lot of pain. And um, mm. when I was making R&B, that was some of my most honest music because, you know, we make mistakes. Yeah. And I couldn't really talk about it with my homies right. as far as like a man. But, mm. you know, when you're singing, it's more, you know, women take, you know, they listen. Yeah. So I used to put my troops in R&B music and like I used to write some really deep songs. But my, so I would say R&B and like trap soul. Party next door. That's my spirit animal. That mm. that is my all time. Like, put a gun to my head, ask me to make a hit. That would be the genre I'd go for. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. Cause we awkward on the phone 